Yo, yo, everybody, what's good? It's your boy BQ, Impact Lounge, YouTube channel, number one place to be for the Impact Wrestling fan. Talking some Impact Wrestling news with you guys regarding Matt Stryker, regarding the commentary team. And uh, if you guys haven't heard, I'm sure most of you have at this point, that Matt Stryker tweeted and deleted that he was disappointed his time was up with Impact Wrestling. Um, I'm going to give shout outs to uh, my guy Mike for, for capturing that tweet. Uh, PWI did reach out um, and confirm with Impact Wrestling that Matt Stryker and his time with Impact is in fact done. So he's been doing commentary since, uh, I believe, Hard to Kill, January 2021. So, you know, exactly a year. I was super excited when he uh, was was coming on to do commentary with, you know, him and D'Lo. I think uh, you guys know I have a love-hate, mostly hate, actually probably 100% hate relationship with Impact Wrestling's commentary and their commentary style. Uh, but I was really optimistic about what these two could do. But I think they disappointed. I think there's been a lot of improvement. Uh, when they did the Hard to Kill show, when they did the pay-per-views, when they did Turning Point, and then even these last set of tapings, which have been live, they've sounded pretty good together. I'm not going to say they were excellent, but there was a big improvement, a huge upgrade and how they sounded in comparison to the post-production stuff that they were doing for the longest time, which I thought was absolutely horrible. And uh, it was disappointing for me because I was very optimistic about what these two could do, but it always came off forced, scripted, fake, just nothing was just real and going with the flow of the match. Uh, you know, you can say what you, you can like or dislike AEW. Uh, if you watch their matches, and you close your eyes, Excalibur is painting a picture for you of what's going on inside the ring. We didn't have that with Stryker on commentary. I'm a big fan of Matt Stryker. Met him in person. Great. Great dude. I was, again, very optimistic when he was coming on board. But I've been watching a little bit of uh, Lucha Underground lately, and they're t it's two different people. Like This guy really checked out for a while. But when he did Turning Point, he sounded great. He was interacting with the crowd. I was like, yeah, this is what I want to hear. This is what I want. And there were, um, there were a lot of improvements. But this is something that I truly feel is very, very necessary. It was something that just had to happen. But, you know, as I was saying, it was a very fake style that I think... I, do, I want to say Don Callis is the one who started this. I, I really do, where he's like, because he wanted to be that all like knowledgeable wrestling guru guy. So I feel like he told Josh Matthews once upon upon a time, ask me a bunch of questions during the match. And that became the new style of commentary ever since. And I thought it sounded absolutely horrible. So what I was just saying a second ago about, you know, you close your eyes, Excalibur paints a picture for you. We didn't get that with Stryker and D'Lo. You know, there was a lot of, uh, you know, you could close your eyes two minutes and you just hear them being very reactionary. There was a lot of, oh, hey, whoa, what the hell? Oh my goodness, who's that? Instead of like actually calling what they saw. And then they would do that for two minutes and then they would do two minutes of both of them being play-by-play -play commentators. Now they're calling the moves, except they're both doing it at the same time and talking over each other, where that wasn't really D'Lo's role, but he would still, you know, be calling moves, you know, calling the pinfalls. And then they would do another two minutes of them both acting like color commentators and just banter and asking, and then the, the stupid questions. You know, D'Lo, what's the state bird of Rhode Island? Oh, striker. The state bird of Rhode Island is the yellow belly cockatiel. Like, who the fuck cares? Some of the things that we just talk about sometimes was just, again, rehearsed. And, you know, I hate the style of making stuff up. You know, D'Lo, what's in, get inside the psyche of Madman Fulton. Striker, right now Fulton saying, Ace, I've had your back all this time. And now I'm going to go out there and prove myself. Like, that's what I'm saying. When you're in there and you're in the booth and you're just like making up stuff that you think or stuff that didn't happen, instead of just calling 
what we saw in the ring, and that style has been absent from Impact commentary for years. It hasn't, it hasn't mattered who's been in the booth. That has just been absent. That's part of the storytelling. The storytelling happens in the ring, but the commentators also have to paint a picture for us. And we don't get that. We haven't got that for a really long time. So I think there's an impact since Turning Point has, has just continually got better. I was saying how last year during the, you know, the pandemic style of wrestling, I, was, I just didn't enjoy it for impact. I, I just didn't. I thought it was boring. I thought it was depressing. And it just right now it's continually getting better. And all the things that I've been saying, yo, fix this, fix this, fix it. It's, it's like it's happening. It's like all of a sudden, these things are improving. I mean, it, it actually blows my mind that they're actually doing it. You know, so all the people out there who are like, oh, BQ, all you do is complain and this and this, everything is fine. If everything was fine and my points weren't valid, they wouldn't be improving them. They wouldn't be changing them. Like they're actually taking the steps to change those things now. You know, I used to talk about the lighting and the freaking music in the background of the interviews, which they still play too much music in the background, but they took it out of the interviews. The lighting, the camera angles, the social media, like now they're upgrading the social media team. Hopefully it's an upgrade because I've, I see an upgrade right now personally. Um, I hope it continues. I've been talking about the commentary. And I didn't think they were going to make a commentary change. You know, uh, I was very optimistic when Don Callis came on board. He was a clear cut heel and him and Josh sounded great. And then all of a sudden, two months later, he's like, I'm going to be a heel one match, baby face the next. I'm going to be serious this match. And then I'm going to tell jokes the next. And Josh Matthews couldn't hang with it because he didn't know how what Don Callis he he didn't know what Don Callis he was getting from match to match, so then the commentary just became god awful. I didn't mind it with Madison Rain. I I personally liked it. A lot of people didn't. I, I thought it was okay. Some of the joking and the banter I didn't really care for, um, just because I don't feel that a play by play announcer should be a jokester. If the color person is that's fine. If they want to be a heel, they want to be, or they want to tell joke, you can get away with that. The guy calling the moves should not be involved in that. That's what I feel. That's what we got a lot with Josh Matthews towards the end, you know, probably the last like two years where he wasn't really like that with the Pope. And again, I have to do this every few months. I have to apologize to the people who've been listening forever that I ever complain about, about Josh Matthews and the Pope because they were good. And I actually liked Josh Matthews back then. It was just, I felt they needed to move on from him because he was hurting the company because a lot of people didn't like him and wouldn't watch TNA for those reasons. Um, but it doesn't look like Josh is coming back. Um, uh, you know, Lewis, who used to do work here on the Impact Lounge, he interviewed Josh and he asked him if he missed his commentary. And he said, no, you know, flat out no, not even a little bit. So it looks like we're going to get a new voice. If it's Ian Riccoboni from Ring of Honor, that would be amazing because he is excellent, paints an excellent picture. Uh, there would be, you know, a little bit of banter, but it'd be minimal stupid jokes, minimal um, asking questions and, you know, just, you know, who do you think is the tallest knockout on the roster? Like, who cares? Uh, so hopefully, who, who, hopefully whoever steps into this role gets away from that style of commentary. And I hope that it's an upgrade from what we've been getting because although I don't think Delo is good he's probably not that experienced so with that being said there's a lot of room for him to be good a lot of room for growth a lot of room for him to be like okay well I'm going to start doing this to sound more natural and it's not easy like trust me I'm someone who doesn't have a natural way of speaking so I, it's not just something you do it's something you you know eventually have to learn but um I think he can improve if the play-by-play -play announcer is a step up from what they had before. So if it's Ian Riccoboni, I think, um, what's her name that did Knockouts Knockdown? Veda Scott is amazing. I've, I've heard her work before, before Knockouts Knockdown, and I always thought she was really good, very well-spoken, uh, you know, had a way of painting a picture and being natural. I would love to see Impact do something different and bring her on. And just, you know, they talk about, hey, we'd like to stay ahead of the curve and be innovative. Like, I don't really think that's true. I think that a lot of what they do is, they do some of that. But I think a lot of what they do a lot of the time is really reactionary. 
I like to see them be like, yo, we're going to be the company that's going to bring a female play-by-play -play announcer. I think that would be really cool, and I think she's good, and I think people want to hear it. Um, but I, I like to see Ian Riccoboni also, as I said. Mauro Ranallo, I know they were in talks with him uh, around the time that you know uh, Hard to Kill happened, and they had... Um, uh, you know the rich you know he came in and did the rich Swan and kenny omega match like i know that they were in talks with him and i think he had interest in doing impact because he would have been able to do it from home but now that the commentary is is you know happening ringside once again thank god i don't think it's i don't think it's going to happen i don't think that's what he wants to do um you know it's different if he's doing bellator or, or, or something like that you know what i mean but a small company like impact you know so um but they're they're making a lot of moves that are really really good uh another one you know is dave penzer who i've been trying to say they got to get him off ring announcing because he's not good anymore but as a play-by-play -play announcer i don't know how much experience he has i just know he did that tna show and sounded really really good uh it sounded really really fresh really different from what we normally hear on impact so uh i think he could really work as well i, I think he could even get involved with a little bit of humor without coming off goofy like Josh Matthews, you know, talking about the micro brawlers, you know, so, but they're, um, they're making so many good moves, folks. And it's the reason these are important when I'm saying, you know, when, when I'm saying, Hey, fix this, fix this. There's so many people who are just like, yo, everything impact does is good. BQ is just complaining. I mean, you don't know how many followers I've lost and how many people actually hate me and dislike me. People at impact don't even like me. Okay. Because I'm always saying, fix this, fix this, fix this. But here's the deal, folks. I come from a place of not a TNA super fan with his tinfoil hat on. I come from the place of a wrestling fan who would be turning on Impact for the very first time and comparing it to what else they see on TV. Because now there's multiple big budget shows on TV. There's NXT, who their the production quality is amazing. Uh, you know, there's AEW now, and there's obviously the WWE stuff. And then there's Impact with Wheel in the Night and all this shit. And they don't compare to that. So you have to make the little moves. The little, the little details do matter. They do count. Because you have multiple big budget shows on TV. And people are going to be like, well, why am I going to watch this? It was different when Ring of Honor was on TV. And it was very similar. You know, Right now it's just Impact. They're the only, like, low, for lack of a better term, low budget wrestling show on TV. I mean, there's obviously MLW. People don't. You know, they don't get a whole lot of viewership. NWA is returning to YouTube. You know, they have a very low quality style. So, I mean, there's other companies out there. But if you're talking about television, there's there's these companies who are just putting all this into the presentation of the show so it looks and sounds good. And then you have Impact not highlighting the fans in the arena. Or when they do show fans, it's fans who are sitting on their hands. And they're playing the stupid song. And they're, you know, doing this and this and this. That's I, I come from a fan. It's like I'm turning the show on for the first time. Do I want you know? Would I turn it on again? Would I keep watching? Because if I were if I were not a fan of this company and I didn't fall in love with them years ago and fall in love with the wrestlers, and I I was one of those dudes. I only watched WWE and then one day I was like, let me give Impact a chance. And I turned it on and saw some of this shit. I don't know that I would watch it again. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's different because I'm invested in this company now. So I, I, you know, I find ways to enjoy most of what they do. But there's still so much room for improvement. And it's not um, because I just feel like complaining. I just truly feel like if you have these other shows on TV, no matter, WWE is still your competition. These are still competition. Even though you'll, ne though you'll never get up to their level, it's still competition because it, it's it's the same, the same genre. It's the same, you know, you want the, the same... Uh, demographic and, and, and all that so um you know let me know your guys thoughts about mass striker change of the commentary we're gonna see who it is at hard to kill i'm guessing uh, maybe we'll know beforehand maybe while i'm talking right now they've already announced it i don't know but we're gonna know here real soon and um you know it's unfortunate striker's not staying on with the company but i thought he was capable of so much more than he actually gave us and uh this comment they have to fix this commentary situation they have to because now whoever they bring in is likely going to be here for a while. So you can't fix it again. You know what I mean? It's not another change you can make. Like you have to make a change now that is going to be good and people are going to want to listen to. Um, so we'll see what they do. I'm your boy BQ. Thanks for checking me out. Peace.